Upon completing this in-service, you will number one, know the definition of HACCP, number two, identify potentially hazardous foods, and number three, understand the seven principles of a HACCP plan. Hazard Analysis Critical Control Points, or HACCP, is a food safety system that can identify and prevent food safety hazards, such as physical, chemical, or biological. These hazards, if not identified and controlled or eliminated, could put consumers at risk for foodborne illness. The leading cause of foodborne illness is improperly cooled foods, followed by food not thoroughly heated or cooked, infected employees or poor personal hygiene, food prepared a day or more in advance of serving, raw contaminated ingredients added to food, food left too long at temperatures that favor bacterial growth, failure to reheat food to temperatures that kill bacteria, cross-contamination, cooked food contaminated by raw food, example, cooked vegetables contaminated by raw chicken, equipment not properly cleaned or sanitized, mishandling of food by employees. Potentially hazardous foods. Certain foods are potentially hazardous because of their protein content, moisture content, and food source. They are referred to as Time Temperature Controlled for Safety Foods, or TCS. Careful handling should be considered for milk and milk products such as yogurt, cottage cheese, cheese, sour cream, poultry, and fish or shellfish. Careful handling should be considered for soy protein foods or tofu, shell eggs or unpasteurized eggs, raw seeds and sprouts, baked or boiled potatoes, meat such as beef or pork, and sliced or cut melon. Bacteria need certain things to reproduce, warmth, moisture, food, and time. It is helpful to remember the acronym FATTOM. F meaning food, high protein food or foods that are already contaminated. A, the acidity of the food pH, and pH is acidity is measured from 0, which is very acid, to 14, which is very alkaline. So an acidity of less than 5 inhibits bacterial growth, and that example would be vinegar or lemon juice. Time, avoid the temperature danger zone, TDZ, for more than 4 hours during an entire preparation and service time. Be sure foods are not past expiration dates. T is for temperature. Avoid the temperature danger zone of 41 degrees Fahrenheit to 135 degrees Fahrenheit. O is for oxygen. Most bacteria need oxygen. Some do not, for example, with botulism. M is for moisture. Free moisture available in food, water activity, or also designated AW, of greater than 0.85, such as meat and poultry, which have a water activity of 0.98. It also described as the water percentage of food. Foods which are high, with a high water level encourage bacterial growth. HACCP principles. The goals of HACCP are to eliminate or reduce significantly the possibility of a hazard or foodborne illness and or prevention of hazard from happening. The seven steps of HACCP are, number one, conduct a hazard analysis. Identify hazards in the facility, making sure to observe the complete path the food travels from receiving, storing, prepping, cooking, holding, serving, cooling, and reheating. Number two, determine critical control points, or CCPs. There are certain critical control points at which food is handled and contamination of bacterial growth can be prevented. The most critical control points are cooking, cooling, holding, and reheating. Number three, establish critical limits. Once you have identified your CCPs, determine the temperature food needs to be heated to or kept at to control bacterial growth. It is helpful to add those critical limits to your recipes or operating procedures. Critical limits must be measurable and must be based on scientific research. Number four, establish monitoring procedures. Use the CCPs to determine how each product will be monitored to make sure the standards are being met. This monitoring action should be recorded so it can be reviewed later if necessary. Number five, identify corrective actions. When a critical limit is not met, a procedure needs to be in place to describe what corrective action to take. The critical limit must be met or the food is to be discarded. Number six, record any corrective action that is taken. Verify that the system works, 
the manager is responsible for determining if the plan is successful by evaluating it on a regular basis. Each plan should prevent, eliminate, or reduce the hazards as intended. Number seven, establish procedures for record keeping and documentation. Keep records of all activities being performed, corrective action taken, equipment condition, and any other correspondence with suppliers. Let's test your knowledge on HACCP principles. Number one, HACCP stands for A, Hazardous and Critical Care Plan, B, Hazardous Assessment Critical Core Points, C, Hazard Analysis Critical Control Points, or D, Hazard Analysis Critical Care Plan. And the answer to question number one, HACCP stands for C, Hazard Analysis Critical Control Points. Question number two, which of the following is not one of the seven steps in developing a HACCP plan? A, determine critical control points. B, identify corrective actions. C, call the state inspector. Or D, verify the system works. And the answer to question number two, which of the following is not one of the seven steps in developing a HACCP plan? And that would be C, call the state inspector. Question number three, cause of foodborne illness include A, improperly cooled foods, B, cross-contamination, C, food not thoroughly cooked, or D, all of the above. And the answer to question number three, cause of foodborne illness include D, all of the above. Question number four, true or false? Milk is not a potentially hazardous food. And the answer to question number four is false. Milk is a potentially hazardous food. Question number five, true or false? Hot food kept at 125 degrees for six hours is safe for consumption. And the answer to question number five is false. Thank you for your participation in today's program. Our goal is for you to use this information in your daily work. We hope you are well served today and every day. If you would like more information about our in-service training programs or consulting dietitian services, please contact us at 1-800-761-9200 or nutritioncaresystems.com.